You are listening to Exploring Sacred with your host, Denise Iwana Francisco, on the Temple Within Radio and Digital Media Network, giving voice to the sacred. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. It's a gorgeous day here in the Enchanted Forest. The birds are chirping and the sun is shining and... uh, The window is open here in the studio so that a beautiful morning breeze is wafting in. It's a gorgeous morning to be alive, to begin something new or to stay on the course as steady as she goes. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the chat room. The chat room is open. If you would like to join me this morning, that would be fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and share the chat room for this morning over in the Exploring Sacred page. There we go. For all of you who are followers of my shows on Spreaker, thank you so very much. And for all of you who follow me on my YouTube channel, thank you for that as well. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, Your support of my work is is appreciated all the way and across the board. So thank you. Good morning, Lady Hawk, down there in Texas. It's early in Texas. Thank you for being here with me this morning. We're going to be talking about time. We're going to be talking about divine timing and whether it's more important to be on time or in time, walking in time with spirit. And do they cross one another? Is there an intersection where being on time and being in time meets? And what is time? What is past? What is present? What is future? It's a lot to talk about in 30 minutes, but we're going to uh, do that. The concept of time, I believe, is something that we as humans have constructed in order to give order to our lives, to our day, to every moment of our existence. And in this time that we are living in, this age that we are living in, everywhere we look, we are able to see what time it is right down to the second to the fraction of a second. We time ourselves so that we're on time. Here in the West in particular, it's considered inconsiderate or rude to be not on time, to be late or to be too early. To be fashionably late, I don't believe is fashionable anymore. To be too early is also in. Uh, considered intrusive. So what is on time? And in order to be on time, we have lots of gadgets. Some that we wear on our bodies, some that we tuck in our pockets and our pocket books, but everywhere we look, there's time. I think there's a lot of anxiety that goes with being on time so that we're not too early and that we're not late. Timing ourselves, finding ourselves in traffic, finding ourselves running out of gas, being pulled over on the side of the road for a traffic ticket, finding ourselves running late because we received a phone call from somebody who needed help in emergency. All of the things that impede our being on time can cause us great anxiety. It's not our fault that there's a traffic jam that's going on. Perhaps there was a car accident or an emergency along the way. And we become anxious about not being on time. Sometimes not even just anxious, but angry and reactionary about what is it that's holding us up? I need to be on time. I don't want to be late. Sometimes we can mull it around in our mind before we even prepare ourselves to leave for what it is that we need to be on time for. Tomorrow, uh, David, Cad Sturkin and I are leaving for Decatur, Georgia for a four-day intensive on ancestral healing. He and I are both adoptees that have reconnected with our biological families, and he and I have decided to take this journey down to Decatur 
and already we're planning. The bags are packed. We know where we're going to take the train from and where we're going to take the train to and approximately how long it's going to take from Atlanta to get where we need to be in Decatur and how long it's going to take from Decatur to get to the Scottish Rite Masonic Temple where the ancestral healing intensive will be. So planning for time so that we're on time. There's so much about being on time. Good morning, Angie. I've always understood time because when you grow up, or the importance of being on time, when you grow up in a military family and you wake up in the morning to reveille at the crack of dawn, right, 6 a.m., 5 a.m., and at night when the sun goes down, taps. I remember that as a kid. It's a great memory, actually, hearing the bugle play in the morning all the way across the army base bases. And you knew that there was order to the day because the bugler begins the day and the bugler ends the day with taps. Always keeping us on time. Church bells, school bells. In the evening when it was time for us to come in from playing, you know, we used to do that back in the olden days, right? Go out in the morning. Angie, you probably remember this, Katie. I know you remember this. As kids, we would go out in the morning after we ate our breakfast, and typically, maybe we would come back for a sandwich, peanut butter and jelly is what I loved in the middle of the day, and we didn't come home until there was something that told us that it was time to come home. For me, it was my dad's whistle. The Sarge had a whistle, you know, one of those hockey whistles (laughs) that involved his fingers, right, his index finger and his thumb. He could whistle like nobody. But the moment that I heard him whistle in the evening, I knew it was time to come home. It was dinner time. And I had only so much time to get my butt back home. (laughs) Or he might come looking. And if he was hungry, he probably wasn't going to be happy that I was going to be late. A couple of years back, I was up at the Northern Cheyenne Reservation And I was listening to Philip Whiteman, who is a tribal chief, spiritual chief of the Northern Cheyenne people, Barbara's cousin, first cousin. And he was talking about the concept of being on time as a European thing. That being on time is so important to the European way of conducting business of allocating hours and minutes and seconds to their day to get the most out of the day. And he began to talk about spiritual time, not being about the necessity of being on time, but what about being in time? And I don't mean in the nick of time, but being in time allowing us to be swept up in living, utilizing our intuition of understanding that sometimes when we are being pushed to be not on time, something is holding us up, something has waylaid us, an emergency has been declared, that perhaps if we look at our lives also as being in time, some would say in divine timing, orchestrated by the intelligence of our soul, we might say that being waylaid has a purpose. Perhaps there's something larger going on that maybe we hadn't considered Maybe in being waylaid, we ourselves might be protected from an accident, a mishap along the way. How many times people have said, you know, I missed the plane and that was the plane that had problems. I missed the plane and that was the plane that went down. I missed that car ride and that's the car ride that had troubles. That was the car that was in an accident. And what about those times that 
we feel that it's our time, it's our turn to get that job. We've been on time, and time says we have now been on the job <coughs> in that position long enough that it's our time for that next job, only to not receive that next job. We're passed over for promotion, or it just doesn't work out. And for a moment, sometimes we can be anxious, we can be angry, we can be disappointed. Only to find out that due to divine timing, that job wasn't meant for us. That relationship was not meant for us. That event was not meant for us in our time. Taking into consideration that, I believe anyway, our soul has some agreements here during the earthly human journey. I think that we have some agreements that we are not always consciously aware of. Our soul may be aware, but our busy mind, particularly here in the West, may not be listening to what our soul is telling us. Good morning, Corey. It's good to see you here this morning, cousin. Divine timing. Why didn't something happen 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 20 years ago? Why couldn't it have happened last year? Well, sometimes I do believe that things aren't just supposed to happen because our brain and our mind says it was supposed to happen. The timeline was intruded upon. The timeline didn't go as we thought it was supposed to go. There we go, thinking again. What about, as Chief White Man said, about being in time, the flow of time, and realizing that perhaps there's a grander orchestration, a magnificent weave that's going on at any given time that involves not only the course of our soul, but the soul of those that we have agreed to accompany and to have accompany us on this human journey, this life's journey. And so we have a lot of time frames going on. There's a lot of stress relief when we can take a look perhaps at just maybe there is divine timing. There's the timing of the will and the timing of the soul that says not quite yet. Hold on, you may not understand it now, but one day, maybe a week from now, maybe a month from now, maybe a decade from now, you'll understand. Exactly, Katie, let go and let God. Let go of the white knuckle ride, <laughs> right? Some people have the steering wheel on the bus of their life so tightly gripped that anything that has them veer a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left throws them into absolute chaos. Some people, when you travel with them, have you ever been with the person that if you travel with them, there are no spontaneous stops along the way. You get in the car or on the airplane and then in the taxi or the shuttle or the rental car and you go exactly where your destination is so that you are perfectly on time. And sometimes there really is no time limit or time frame. It's the time frame in your mind or in your brain. Sometimes we need to be on time to a party or a dinner or something like that because we need to be there because there's a schedule happening. Most often, the time frame we're talking about is the one that we have in our own brain. What if we could train the brain to say, but what about if I enjoy the car trip and allow for perhaps, maybe if I'm going to Mackinac Island next weekend, I might want to stop at Seashell City. Maybe I want to stop at the cross in the woods. Maybe I want to stop in Mackinac City before I go to Mackinac Island. And maybe after Mackinac Island, I'll go to St. Ignace. I'm just going to be intuitive about my trip. I'm going to enjoy the journey, not just be on time. I think we can apply that same principle to some things in our lives. Last week, somebody asked me, so Dana, is there any part of you 
that's angry that it took you 56 years to find your family, your biological family? Is there any part of you that's angry? And I said, you know, there's not a part of me that's angry. But there is a part of me, if we're going to be honest, that wishes I would have more time. I wish I would have more time. And had meeting my biological relatives happen 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years ago, I would have had more time to know them, them to know me, meet those that have passed on. But if I look at it from the perspective of divine timing and agreements of my soul, in time, in this time, I've met exactly who it is that I'm to meet and yet to meet in the perfect time. In the perfect time. And in the meantime, having experiences that have made me who I am today. Right on time. I feel as though when we're in time, moving in time, moving with the rhythms of our life, not moving with a clock or a watch clock or any of those, a timer, but moving with the rhythms of our journey. I believe we're in time. And we can feel when it's time for something new, can't we? We can feel it in our bones. It's time for something new. Or we can feel something new approaching. Or we find ourselves in the dreamscape, showing things that will happen in what we call the future. I believe that all time is happening now. Last week at the Mystery School, uh, one of my favorite people that comes to mystery school, Elena, she's from Moscow. She is a biophysicist. And I was talking about time and about the divine orchestration of time and what is time and is all time happening now. And I asked her as I was speaking if from her perspective as a PhD of biophysics, and the daughter of an astrophysicist, if she would correct me in what I was saying so that I could learn, I could you know, deepen my understanding of what it is I talk about or that I share. And she said, in quantum physics, you know, all time is now. There is no past, there is no present, there is no future, it, there's just now. And all things are dipping in and out of time. Dipping in and out of time. When somebody asks me about potentials for their future, we have lots of potentials for our future based on what we're doing in the now and what we have done leading up to the now, this present moment, including if we believe in reincarnation and past lives. I do, personally. She said, yes, we're always dipping in and out of time. All things are dipping in and out of time. Time is not something that is broken down in the universe. It just exists. So what if we were to have a circadian rhythm within our own minds, within our own body, that said, yes, it's appropriate to be at the baby shower at such and such a time. It's ne necessary to be at work because I'm needed there at that time, and I need to leave at a certain time then to take care of my family. But what about scheduling every other thing? according to our rhythm, the rhythm of our heart, of our soul, our quest to learn, our quest to travel, our quest to expand. Sometimes I believe life calls us to a quest and we can feel it inching up on us and we don't necessarily know what it is and maybe our dream time gives us a clue. Boy, last night, my dreams, holy smokes, I think I feel like I slept for about an hour last time, leading up to this ancestral workshop that I'm headed to down in Decatur, Georgia. My dreams have been intense. They have been wild. They've been from the past. They've been from the future. Preparing me for, relating with and to my ancestors. 
those that wish to work with me on my soul path and me with them, frankly. So sometimes our dream times, our daydreams, our feelings give us a clue that a quest is about to happen. Something is coming along the path. Do we have time for it? We'll say, well, I don't have time for that. And yes, if we have a job, we only have a certain amount of vacation that we can take. And not everybody can just leave their job and, and, you know, gallivant around the world. But in our spare time, in the moments that we're not working, what are we doing with that? What are we doing with our time? Are we perched on a sofa watching TV? Are we smack dab in front of a video game trying to get to the next level? Are we giving our brain a rest and letting our soul wander? We used to do that. Some of us still do. I do that. I'm a wanderer. Yeah, Katie is saying she believes in reincarnation as well. I do too. I always have. And in particular, as you all know, when Elise told me when she was the ripe old age of almost two, that last time around, she was my mommy. That was the beginning of an adventure. That's a classic example. Last time around, when I was your mommy, I didn't make you eat with a fork and a knife. <laughs> Set about a quest learning about past lives. Lots of research. Finally did get to meet Brian Weiss, by the way. What a wonderful man. He's kind of one of the pioneers of past life investigations. Many lives, many mansions, or many mansions, many lives. Fabulous man, a humble man. We make the time, hopefully, for when our soul calls us to something. It's amazing when we say, my soul is being led toward this. My soul is thirsting to learn more about that. It's always stunning to me how a way has always been provided for me to follow that quest. Even when I was a single mom and I thought, there is no way I'm going to be able to do that. A way, a door, an opportunity was always provided. And it's still that way. I guess because I I know. I know that if our soul is being led somewhere, it's being supported by something we may not always see. We may not always understand. But if our soul is being drawn to something, I do believe a way will always be provided. If we are open to it happening not on our time clock, but in divine timing. If I would have gone to an ancestral workshop 10 years ago, one year ago, and I had opportunities to do that, one year ago, six months ago, seven months ago, it would not have been as deep and rich and meaningful for me as it is now. And somewhere in my understanding of things, I knew not now, maybe later. Maybe later. The time just doesn't feel right now. And then in March, my friend Cad sent me a note saying, hey, there's something going on down, down in your neck of the woods, down in Decatur, Georgia, on Creek Cherokee land in the Scottish Rite Masonic Temple, (laughs) having to do with ancestral healing. And adoptees are welcome. Hey, you want to go? It will be much more rich and fulfilling. Thanks to Corey and Johnny and Donna and Bobby and Vicki and Danielle, right? Anne-Marie, Mike much more fulfilling. Wanda, myself are following the lead, the call. It's summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere and my son 
just made a trip nine hours north, five hours north and west of the Mackinac Bridge up to the Porcupine Mountains up there at Copper Harbor. And it rained the second day in and just washed his tent right out. And I said, well, did you have fun? And he said, Mom, it was the most spectacular sunrises and sunsets I've ever seen in my life. The ride up was absolutely beautiful. You know how it is there along US 2 toward Newberry? I said, I do. He said, we enjoyed the drive. We enjoyed the sights. We especially enjoyed the waterfalls the streams, the rivers. He said, we hiked and we took, you know, little side, side tours. We didn't really have a plan. We just knew that we wanted to explore. And so I thought to myself, I think I did something good along the way in teaching my son about being in time rather than just on time. Being in time allows us to explore and gives us permission to explore. If we're always on the, well, at exactly 0700, I need to be, and at 0900, I'm expected to do, and at 1300 hours, right, and at 1900 hours, If we give ourselves time to be in time, that means we've given ourselves permission, I believe anyway, to explore. Maybe to explore who we are right now in this moment of time. I don't believe any of us are who we were six months ago or a year ago. There are those that have a bit of arrested development, and maybe they are. But I think for most of us, we're really not the same person. But do we take the time in time to assess who we are now, how our lives, how our psyche, how our soul, how the way we live or look at life has changed because of being in time? The experiences of time those spaces in between the dash, right? Born in 1962, it's that dash between there and the death date that counts. Being in time means that we listen to the small voice that says, Dana, don't go right, take a left. Take a left. Um, Maybe today isn't the day, maybe the day is next week. Next week would be better. Don't rush. Sit with it. Be with it, Dana. The the voice of our divine timer, whether we call that our soul, our higher self, our allies, our guides, our ancestors that say, wait a minute, just wait. I remember the first time I asked my law professor to unseal my adoption records. It was the year 1995, around 1995-96. And I asked Sharon, Sharon, hey, would would you do me a favor and would you open my adoption records? She said, yeah, I'll do that. And probably two months later, I got a phone call and I met her at her office and she looked at me and she said, you know, Dana, there are, Denise, there are some things that are just really better left unknown. Or maybe it was more around 2002. Right around 2002 it was. It would have been after my biological father had passed on. But my mother was still alive. And she, she looked at me and she said, you know, there are things that probably it would be better left unknown for you. And in my youth and naivety, I walked away from that file. Or maybe it was something greater that said, Dana, just get up and go back to the newspaper. Because that is what I did. In fact, she ushered me out of the door. And I've had time to reflect on that. What would my life had been like had I said, Sharon, I'm a grown woman, please show me that file. What would I have seen? What would I have known? How would, ha- how would it have altered my life in that moment? How would it have altered my life going forward? 
What would it have been like to meet my biological mother? What would it been, have been like for her? Maybe it would have been traumatic, too traumatic. Maybe it would have been the best day of her life. I don't know, but at this point, all I can trust is that divine timing was in play. Sometimes it's the people in our lives that help to orchestrate divine timing by saying, you know, Katie, maybe not today. Maybe you should think about that for a moment. Angie, maybe maybe you should sit with that for a minute rather than jump right in. Or Angie, I say go for it. Angie, what are you waiting for? Jump, leap, go for it. Sometimes divine timing provides that person too. <laughs> that says, what are you waiting for? Get going, live your life, live it to the fullest and allow for time of exploration, allow for divine timing, allow for the timing of your soul and the voice of that timing. It's amazing what happens when we veer off of the beaten path or the path that's been beaten for us or laid out before us to take the left, to take the right, to take the curve in the road that we're not sure where it's going to take us. And in the end, it all works out anyway. That's the great part. In the end, it all works out. If I would have opened that file, if I would have insisted on that file, if, as my former husband wanted me to do 20-some years ago, I would have pursued it vehemently, in the end, it all works out. And in the end, ultimately, when we're all together in spirit, we take a look at the divine timing and the orchestrations and the woulda, coulda, shouldas that were actually, okay, we'll agree to do it this way. We see the perfection. We see the perfection without the anxiety of, if I only woulda. I shoulda, I coulda. No, we see the perfection. We see one another. We thank one another for being on time and in time. With that, everyone, have a beautiful day. Enjoy being in time. Honor the necessity to be on time. But enjoy the exploration of really your soul being in this wave of time, all time. You are vast, you are expansive, you are deep, you are love in expression, dancing across a tapestry that we call time, which is simply now. With that, everyone, blessings be. Have an astounding, astounding day.